In today's lesson, you'll learn how to create any animation in any software that you like by following six easy steps. So if you're one of those people who find keyframing a little too difficult, this one's for you. Once you know the property that you want to animate or change over time, there'll be six steps that you need to follow in quite a specific order in order to be able to animate it. And you could be using any software to do this. If you learn and memorize these steps, you'll be able to animate anything from, say, an explosion to a simple text animation. So let's see what those steps are. Let me just go and enable this layer. Here are the six steps I was talking about. You'll realize that I've left the last step in a slightly different shade because this last step is an optional step depending on the software you're using. So some applications won't actually need you to go through this last step. The first five is going to be sufficient. So let's start with the first step. The first step is to go to the time. Now, let's say the animation you want to create is for the arrow to go from the left side of the screen to the center of the screen. So with that in mind, this go to time means when do I want this arrow to start moving? Let's say I don't want anything to happen to the arrow for one second, and it will start moving on the one second mark. So I'll just go and push this to one second. That's what I mean by go to time. The second step is to set the start value. So where do I want the arrow to be? at this point in time. Well, we said it was going to be on the left-hand side, so I'm just going to set this to be on the left. That was the second step. The third step is to create the first keyframe. Now, a keyframe is our way of telling the software that we want this property, in this case, the position, to be saved with these numbers at this point in time, so that the software can record and remember what the property was at this point in time. Although there are different ways of creating keyframes depending on the application you're using, the thing that they do is pretty much the same. They just record a value. So right now, I'm using After Effects, and the way to create a keyframe in After Effects is to click on the stopwatch icon here next to the property that you want to animate. So I'll click on that, and that creates the keyframe here. I'll then go to the fourth step, which is to change the time. So how long do I want this arrow to take to go from here to here? Let's say I want it to take two seconds. So I'll just go and push the playhead from one second to three seconds. That was a fourth step. And the fifth step is to set the end value. So where does the arrow end up at this point in time? Well, we said it was going to end up around about here. And that was the fifth step. In After Effects or Photoshop or Premiere Pro or Final Cut, you don't actually need this last step. The software creates the second keyframe for you. You see, the last step here is to create the second keyframe, which is to record where this object is going to be at this moment in time. But After Effects does that for us. It creates the second keyframe automatically. So really, we just had five steps to go through. And once that's done, if I go back to the beginning and play, you see nothing's going to happen from the beginning until the one second mark. Then the arrow is going to start moving. And then it will keep on moving until three seconds. And then it will stop. Let's take a look. And that's exactly what's happening. Now, the way to control the speed of the animation is to change the distance between the keyframes. So if the object is going from this point to this point in two seconds, it'll have to go at a certain speed. But if I give it less time, let's say if I get it to move in just one second, so it goes from one second to two seconds, well, it will have to go twice as fast to cover the same distance. And indeed it does. If I give it even less time, it will have to fly much faster. So if I give it less time to complete the same animation, it goes fast. If I give it more time, it goes slow. Let me put this back to, let's say, two and a half seconds, maybe, here. And I'll put my playhead back on top of this keyframe as well. Now, if I want the animation to continue, let's say, for example, I now want the arrow to go from here to here, I can now go back to the fourth step so I can change the time again. So let's say I go from here quite far, let's say to the end of the timeline. So that's from two and a half seconds until six seconds. And then I'll set the end value again. So where does the arrow end up again? So let's say it's going to go here. Because this distance here is greater than this distance, the second part is going to play slower than the first part. Let's play. You see when the arrow hits this keyframe, it starts moving slowly. 
Let me exaggerate this. I'm going to push this keyframe towards left so that this distance is covered really quickly. And then it takes its time to go from this keyframe to that keyframe. Let me go back and play. So it moves really fast at the beginning. And then as soon as we hit the second keyframe, it slows down and continues to move at that pace until the end of the timeline. Of course, we can go and make the path a little nicer as well. So if I go select the layer, click on these keyframes here, I can try and get this to be the same as the path. So if I push this one up as well, so it's kind of following the same path as the actual road here. So if I now play it, So as long as we remember these steps, we'll be able to animate anything. Let me show you another example. So here I have a video clip. And let's say I want this clip to go from black and white to full color over time. So let's go and find the effect that I can apply to make that go black and white. There are a couple of different ways of doing this in After Effects. I'll use this effect called Lumetri Color. So I'll just apply this to the clip. And then I'll go to Basic Correction. And then I'll update the saturation here. So it will go from zero to 100%. Again, I'll follow the same steps. Just to make life easier, I'll copy and paste this layer from here to here. So you can kind of see this here as well. So the first step is to go to the time. When do I want this clip, the video clip, to start going from black and white to full color? Let's say at the very beginning. So I'm at the correct time now. I'll set the start value. So I'll select this layer. Go to saturation, and the start value is going to be zero. I'll create the first keyframe. I can also create a keyframe in After Effects by clicking on the stopwatch here, as opposed to the timeline. So I'll click and create the keyframe here. I'll then change the time. So how long do I want this to take for it to go from black and white to full color? Let's say one second. So I'll just push this to one second now. I'll set the end value. So what do I want the saturation to be at this point? Well, 100%. And now if you go back and play, you'll see it will go from black and white to fully saturated over one second. And those keyframes are here on the timeline as well. I can now go and separate these away so the animation is slower or push them closer to each other so that the transition from black and white to full color happens quickly. If I play it now, it doesn't take as long. Or if I separate these, it takes much longer to go from black and white to full color. So the principles remain exactly the same. Let's see how this can be done in, say, Premiere Pro. Let me switch over to Premiere Pro. Let's say I want this clip to start blurry as her eyes are closed. And as she opens her eyes, it will start going from blurry to sharp. Like she's just waking up. So for that, I'll go to Effects, and maybe let's say we apply the Gaussian Blur effect to this. And then apply that to the clip. We'll then go to Effect Controls. At the beginning, it's going to be blurry, right? Let me bring the same text here as well. And I'll make this white as well so we can actually see what's happening. I'll go to Text, and then go to the Fill, make it all white. Here we go. So I'll go to the time first. When do I want this clip off the girl to start going from blurry to sharp? Well, at the beginning. So I'm going to push the playhead right to the beginning. That was the first step. We'll set the start value. So the start value for blurriness is going to be, let's say, this much. We'll create the first keyframe by clicking on the stopwatch next to blurriness. And then we'll change the time. That is, when do we want the clip to go sharp again? Let's see when she opens her eyes. I'm going to push this forward. So here is when her eyes are fully open. So we just change the time now. And we'll set the end value. So the end value is going to be zero, which creates the second keyframe for us. So we can ignore the sixth step. If I go back and play, you see the clip will start blurry, and then it will go sharp. Let's see how we can apply the same six steps in Photoshop. So let me switch over to Photoshop. And here I have a simple composition of Tower Bridge in London. And then I have a banner and the text London. And what I want to do is for the banner to fade in. And as soon as the banner fades in, I want the text to slide in from off screen to where it currently is. So for that, I'm going to open up the timeline in Photoshop. 
and I'll actually go and create a timeline, which will put all of my layers into the timeline. And what I want to do now is to start with the rectangle's opacity. Let me first go and paste the same text here as well, actually, so it will be easier for us to understand what's happening. And I'll make these white as well. And I'll put them here. So I can keep referring back to these. So what I want to do now is to go to the time when I want this white banner to start fading in. Well, I want that to happen at the very beginning. So I'm going to go right to the beginning of the timeline. I'll set the start value. First, let me just go and turn off this London text so it's easier. So I'll set the start value for the white banner. So I'm going to select the white banner here. And then the start value for opacity is going to be zero. So I'll just set that now. I'll create the first keyframe for this. So I'll go to the rectangle here. And let me scroll down. And it's the opacity that I want to animate. So I'm going to keyframe it. That creates the keyframe here. I'll then change the time. So how long do I want this to fade in for? Let's say maybe one second. So I'll go to the one second mark. And then I'll just go and set the end value. So I'm going to go to the opacity here and then change it from zero to 100%, which creates the second keyframe for us. Again, we didn't need to go through this last step. If I now go back and play, here's what I have. And let's say as soon as the banner fades in, I want the text to slide in. So we'll follow the same steps again, but this time for the position of the text. So go to time. When do I want the text to start moving? Well, we said it will start moving as soon as the banner fades in. So on the one second mark, we'll set the start value. Let me first go and make the text visible. The start value, in this case, the position value is going to be here. So this is where the text starts from off screen. I'll then create the first keyframe. So I'll go to the text layer, keyframe the transform, which ends up creating the keyframe here. I'll then change the time. Let's say I want this to go on for 20 frames here. And I'll set the end value. So I'm going to bring the text back here. And that creates this keyframe. And let's see what we have now. So the banner fades in, and then the text slides in. Let's now see an example where we actually have to go through the sixth step as well. So I'm going to switch to a different application, this time Cinema 4D. And here I have a cute scene of this mouse looking at this cheese with his mouth open. And what I want to do is to create an animation of a camera, let's say flying from, I don't know, here maybe, to a different angle, maybe like that. So we can start quite close, like this. And then this can be our starting frame, and then we can pull back out, like that. Let me just go and paste the text here as well, so we can use that as reference. So I'm going to go create some text first. And here I'm going to paste the same text. Let me make this smaller. And I'll lift it up so we can see what's happening. I'll make it a little smaller. Right, so now we have the steps. The first step is to go to the time. When do I want the camera to pull back out? Let's say at the beginning of the timeline. Here. We'll set the start value. So let's first go and create a camera, of course. So I'm going to go create a camera. Look at the scene through the perspective of that. And the start value is going to be this. That's where it's going to start from. The third step is to create the first keyframe. Now, in this case, I want to animate not just one property. So not just, let's say, the X or the Y position of the camera. But I want to animate multiple properties. So here, I'll actually type in create first keyframes. So I'm going to go to the camera, coordinates, and I'll keyframe the position values for all three, X, Y, and Z, as well as the rotation values for heading, pitch, and banking of the camera. So I just now created the first keyframes. And now we have to change the time. So how long do I want this camera to take for it to go from this angle to the next angle? Let's say maybe 60 frames. So that was the fourth step. You'll now set the end value. So where do I want the camera to end up at? Let's say here maybe. 
And now in Cinema 4D, we actually do have to create the second set of keyframes as well. So in a program like After Effects, we didn't need to do anything else. This would just create the keyframes for us. Here in Cinema 4D, we have to select the camera again and then go to coordinates and then re-keyframe to create the second set of keyframes here for all of the properties we want to animate. Now that it's done, I can see the first set of keyframes here on frame 0 and then the second set here on frame 60. And if I go back and play, here's what I have. Again, if I want to slow down the animation, all I have to do is to take the second set of keyframes here and then pull them out to the right and then play again and it will be slower now. As you can see, it's exactly the same steps that we follow to create any animation in any software. Before you go, if you want to win a free, live and fully interactive course, you can enter our weekly prize draw, where you can win a five-day course normally worth over $1,000. All you have to do is to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon here and cross your fingers. So don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.